New World Patch 3.0.3 is here and it brings with it some massive changes as well as the Turkulon event. But yeah, there's some actual big balance changes here with the healing, shirking heals, blunderbuss and more. So let's jump in, let's talk about it. So yeah, as I said, this patch does bring the event. The main reason to do this event is basically for your daily gold as well as that skin right there because it's just fun. The patch itself will be very late night if you're in the West of America in the Pacific time but it'll be first thing tomorrow if you're in the UK or EU. One thing that's never mentioned here, when they do these patches, they also switch over the arena. And lately, they've actually been messing up some of the mutations. Hopefully, they won't do that this time. Although, no promises there. For Turculon, the thing that you're going to want to do is basically kill it, I think, 14 times and you'll get all the rewards and then you do it daily if you want the gold. But let's jump into the good stuff. Now, I'm not going to read every single one here because there are actually some very important things rather than them all being like minor. I'm not actually sure i even understand this first one but basically they're lowering the spawn rate at the day spring tree poi i'm not sure why that was needed i'm not quite sure what that affects but just thought i'd mention it just in case but really the main ones here are sort of the mutations and the expeditions so they had an issue with some gatherables just not appearing in starstone but they've now fixed some issues that we were running into when we're doing the mutation so for example the enemy kill current in dynasty shipyard was probably too high and if you killed all the mobs i don't think you could actually hit the required amount or it was very difficult one or the other but now it's been lowered to 60 and that makes sense and the depths has just ended as being mutated but basically even if you killed all of the mobs it wasn't counting because guldar wasn't counting which meant you couldn't get eight all named mobs which meant you couldn't do that tick on the mutation but they're fixed but let's get into the juicy juicy stuff so there are some major combat changes uh, and it starts with the artifacts so scorpion sting is now having a trade-off to this sting perk yes you do do the yanking but you are also going to have an increase in cooldown for the javelin by 50 percent now what's interesting about this in the ptr i believe the javelin is being extended anyway although it might be if you hit it the javelin is being reduced either way i'm wondering if this is being combined with that or if it's going to be replaced not 100 percent sure about that just yet and then the lost stopwatch is actually having some major changes first it's having its uh, duration change from being a hundred percent increase to just being a flat one second now you might think that that's a nerf and for a lot of the most egregious ones it is but if you think about the bolt caster the new bow on the ptr weirdly that would change the stun from 0.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds so it would be a buff to some stuns and not to others i'm not sure like what the overall percentage of what stuns would be better and which ones would be worse i'm not going to do the master i don't really care about it that much but you know a little bit of a buff a little bit of a nerf depending on the situation really it's to stop the very egregious moments where you're stunned for like five seconds and it's just pain so probably a good change i think although i suspect some people might choose it like with the ball and as well as that though the increased damage reduction is going from five percent to ten percent so when you have this you do five percent less damage currently well as of tomorrow that's going to be ten percent less damage i'm not sure about that one that could be a little bit too harsh um, I'm not a theory crafter, I'm not really sure, but yeah, that could be a little bit too much. It might not, it might be perfect. Odo is having a change. Updated functionality to include that the damage bonus applies to knockdown targets. So basically, this does damage to stun targets, but knockdown wasn't counting. No, they do. And then this one's actually quite ironic considering what I was talking about on stream today. I was talking about the healer win rate and sort of like making healers very mad. I love you guys when you're healing me. Not a huge fan when you're not. But basically, disease is getting buffed. And if you don't know, disease basically reduces the healing. And what it did is it used to reduce the healing on you. But now all diseases are going to be having uh, are going to be reducing the outgoing healing as well. So your outgoing healing will be reduced and your incoming healing will be reduced. This affects plague strikes, plague crits, plague splitting grenades, infected four, putrefying scream and the pvp arena healing reduction that my friends is a big nerf to healing just in arenas in general that could be very strong now plague crits is also getting a little bit buff in the sense that it used to only work if you did a crit on an enemy who was less than 50 percent now it just works on all crits and importantly it can be refreshed now i actually didn't know that it couldn't be refreshed so effectively if you have a disease on you and you crit them again it wasn't refreshing it so it would have to run out and then you'd have to wait for the next crit that's not the case anymore every crit will refresh and it's actually that's what's been added to plague strikes as well which is the one that i've actually been using when we come across a healer in arena i was changing out my spear 
and trying to do heavy attacks basically didn't realize that it was basically capped by if they had it or if they didn't but all right fair enough this is like major when it comes to anti-healing i don't think it's too much to ask that you take an extra weapon into an arena just in case there is a healer but it might be for something like in arena that you don't even need to do that because of this but we'll have to wait and see this is a very big change that's going to affect the meta i think in some significant ways it's going to affect wars outpost rush and arena basically pretty much all pvp it's very very important very big i can't understate how important i think that this is probably going to be speaking about things that are important though shuriken heals is getting nerfed it's having its cooldown increased from five seconds to 10 seconds now i'm not sure it really needed this once they had already nerfed it and they'd fixed it and all that jazz with ank i don't really think that this was that bad now i am just one pleb doing arenas and outpost rush i'm not the best pvp out there by any stretch of the imaginations not the worst but i'm not good but for me shirking heels felt like it was in a okay place it was strong but it wasn't like i don't i, I don't think it was overpowered necessarily but they want to go ahead and do this and fair enough for me i think this pretty much kills shuriken heals i probably need to reinvest not that i actually spend that much but i probably need to change my gear to just go like enchanted ward health and then whatever the hell makes sense refreshing if i need it weapon perks if i need those i'm not sure about shuriken fortification you know i'm not a top end pvp -er, but if they tell me shuriken fort is good then i should probably get some which to be fair that probably depends on the weight situation that you've got but yeah i don't know if it was needed but it's happened the next one is basically a subtle nerf to some of the bleeds so the butcher the spear and the rapier all physical and slash gem perks now include damage from bleeds as part of the slash damage so you will now reduce the damage from bleeds basically meaning that those dots will be less effective if you have the corresponding gems mm, that probably makes sense bleeds were a little bit strong i mean i think dots in general in new world at the minute are a little bit strong both from the fire staff the bow etc but it's a start i guess and then this one i think is warranted now if you're a twitch viewer i know trick trick may not be a fan of this one but this exhaustive net shot was very very strong with a massive hitbox and a quite a long range and the the time of it was like eight seconds very oppressive and they changed it from eight seconds to four seconds a big nerf to the bundabus to be fair and then we continue to see some nerfs to the bundabus this first one's not really a nerf it just sort of looks like it because it says they've increased the base damage in pve by 3.75 percent and they've reduced the base damage in pvp by an additional 3.62 basically to keep it where it was i think it's not like there is a zero point i think basically pve is the starting point and then pvp gets nerfed from that so it makes sense that they've had to nerf that to put it where it was all right not really a problem that basically just makes it more viable in pve that's a fine change i don't really see it too much in pve then the last chance passive is having its uh, 45 reduced from 50 to 30 percent 45 just a straight up nerf the honor roll passive is made it so that each stack has its own unique duration not really sure i don't really play bundle buff and no to know what this actually really is going to do primary fire is reducing the damage coefficient from 23 percent per pellet to 20 21 percent per pellet that is literally just a straight up nerf and asb is reducing the damage from 50 percent per pellet to 45 percent per pellet another straight up nerf i'm guessing pretty much most of this is just a straight up nerf to the bundabus it's sort of funny to me because one thing like i don't know if it's the fire staff or the bundabus but the fire staff bundabus combination is very strong it's funny that the bundabus is the one that's taking the brunt of it we sort of joke that some of the devs actually play fire staff and you know what i'm getting more convinced about that further nerf to the healing basically life staff splash of light is having its radius reduced i don't know if this is the one that they've changed a couple of times and then changed back but they're making it so that you need to be closer yeah i don't know about this this one's just a straight up nerf i don't really understand this one but the void blade they removed the duration limit of void blade and now it remains active until the weapon becomes inactive that sounds like a buff but i don't really understand the implication so the next one's actually pretty damn huge they fixed an issue that prevented certain named pvp item upgrades so this they disabled this recently basically and the reason they did that is because i think it's because you could upgrade the old stuff and i think that was the thing they didn't like so if you had like 625 gear 
or 600 gear that you'd not upgraded, you could basically upgrade it using the new method and it was all a little bit weird. But to address this, what they've done is they've added new versions on the PvP reward track. Now these new versions, by the way, are very strong. The perks are very strong. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but it's something pretty damn good. Now, unlike the originals, these named items can be upgraded at the Gypsum Kiln. And to make it easier for adventurers to distinguish between the two, the old ones have now been removed from having the name tag. Therefore, they just can't be upgraded and you're not going to be able to like even consider doing that because you can't fair enough the new stuff the new pvp gear looks quite good i don't know if that's going to be now or if it's going to be in the ptr can't remember where i saw it but the perks look very good on the new pvp reward track looking good there the next one you may be aware that the artemis boon status effects and the, the secrets of the spore portions and stuff like that have been disabled the reason that was is that they were basically working in situations where they weren't supposed to so you could essentially get a damage buff in pvp which was weird so they initially disabled them just in total now they are disabled in the arena pvp the secrets of the spore one is and uh, the rest of them have been disabled in the arena pvp and non-savage divide expeditions i think you are basically intended to do and use these in the savage divide which makes sense because it's actually quite difficult in m3 not that i've done it because i'm terrible one major change to an artifact sort of weird where they've put some of these but basically the chromatic ward is an icon on the wall it's a perk on the wall and i think it like it's very high elemental resistance to all elemental like damage however it wasn't working but now it is that's going to make that shield quite strong but personally i hate the fact you can't dodge now they are also adjusting the attitude chest that can be bought from the faction shop now these when launched were an absolute scamazon honestly they were just a complete ripoff but now instead of giving you like two or three tier five materials they're actually going to just give you 60 to 120 tier 52 which is, i'm going to read that as 5.2 personally which are basically you know spin weave mithril etc i still think that that might be a ripoff but i'd have to do some maths and i'm not going to do that right now the next one's pretty big because i see this all the time when i'm streaming they fixed an issue that caused mithril rings and earrings to not function as intended basically from uh, i never actually did this but basically i think if you're trying to craft a ring you sort of had to craft an icon that looked like an earring and vice versa and it was all it was just broken basically so hopefully they fixed it fixed a rare issue that caused war instances to not properly start not seen people complaining about that but maybe the warlogers don't watch me and they are going to now test these simultaneous influence races and they're going to do this on abiton and then they're going to see if it makes sense. We'll see if we end up with any like crazy crashes or anything like that. The plan is, for those of you who don't know, at the minute there's three influence races at the time, but there's a lot of people getting teleported because they're very, very popular, because they're very, very fun. And what they're saying is, instead of it being three, there'll be four, but we'll do two at the same time, and then two at the same time. So there's more points being contested. Hopefully that should spread people out. If I'm honest, the rest of these aren't really that major, so we'll leave it there. But yeah, some major changes, honestly. Scorpion Sting, straight up nerf. Lost Stopwatch, a bit of a nerf, a bit of a slight buff, depending, I think, on some situations. Odo, a little bit of a buff. That disease and healing, again, is going to be very, very important. Shirkin Heals, I think, possibly nerfed too far now. Don't think it's going to have much of a purpose, but maybe I'm wrong. Blunderbuss just got absolutely wrecked. Like just completely decimated a little bit. I don't know how bad that will be, but there's definitely some nerfs here to the Blunderbuss. It might still be strong because it was strong. I'm not really sure. Sort of feel like Firestaff should be next. And then probably Serenity. Although I play Serenity, so I, I like to claim that Serenity is perfectly balanced. Don't judge me. You can't nerf my build. That's not possible, Amazon. Don't do it. Okay, if it gets nerfed, it gets nerfed. It is what it is. Yeah, some major balance changes, though. Like, bigger than what I expected for this patch. Of course, it does bring Turculon, which is a little fun event. Don't get too worked up if you really wanted something major. It's not that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to support me and help me grow the channel, then becoming a Patreon is truly the best way. And if you want to come and watch me, I'll be streaming this live tomorrow as soon as this goes live, basically, over on Twitch. We'll have some good times and joyous occasions. Other than that, I hope you have the most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.